substitute for Bozell. Looking back for Fittipaldi as well. And there comes Emmo as he closes on Raul Boisel. So Allenser Jr. has picked up the lead of the Marlboro 500. The winner of the Michigan 500 is he on his way to making an, uh, the Indy 500. Is he on his way to making it two in a row in 500 mile races and a lot more points for the PPG championship? The battle continues here in Michigan. Boisel running in second place, 42 laps since his last stop comes in. Hopefully they can get a good change on that car, Gary Gerald. This team had been practicing its pit proficiency earlier today. Richie Simon on the right front already has made the change. They're waiting for the fuel. Now there's a wing adjustment. It's a dramatic one. Turns look like two turns on both sides from Richie Simon waiting for the fuel. Now he's rolling about 15, 16 seconds plus, Paul. And as he rolls out, Al Unser Jr. comes into the pits for his service on the 164 lap. Jan Vikas. Well, he brings it to a stop right on the marks, Paul. We're going to keep a careful eye out for changes on this car. The changes that you will see will be in the front wing area if they decide to go for any at all. Okay, we've got all the tires changed. It's off the jacks. Oh, well, this is a little bit different. They went off the jacks earlier. Now they're just waiting for the fuel. Al Unser Jr. 15, just a little over 15. He's out of here. So stops by first and second. Raul Boisel will keep an eye on his times now as he gets it up to speed. His first lap out of the pits at 226 miles an hour. And Scott Goodyear picks up the lead of the race with those stops. And we've got Guzelman in trouble coming out of the pits. Looks like he was on a pit exit. Maybe the wheel came off, who knows? That looks like what it is from here now we did get the report earlier that he did have a vibration or felt a vibration i don't know whether that was the cause of this no yellow but what? Guzelman, who was having a superb run what they're doing it sounds like the officials are going to close the pits if they're doing it they're doing it out of they've decided yellow for the pits only that will keep them open. That means Scott Goodyear and Robbie Gordon are now battling for the lead of this race. You're on board, Gordon. That's Goodyear just ahead. And Gordon is out of sync with the pit stops. We know that because of what happened with that tire explosion earlier that he was so lucky to get away with. But what a battle now we have for the lead. Goodyear, who would have believed it? And Robbie Gordon. Ah, but Robbie Gordon and Scott Goodyear made their last stop on the same lap 42 laps ago as Gordon heads into the pits. Goodyear stays out. Jan Vikas, here comes Robbie Gordon toward you. You got it, and what you're going to watch for is one of the brakes locking up. There it is. Oh, both are locked up. Oh, boy, we called that one, Paul. He's been coming in here and locking up the brakes, and he did it again today, but he stopped it right where he wanted to. Earlier, Derek talked about those carbon fiber brakes. They are, oh, there we see a wing change also. Half turn on the front wings. Very hard to get the car stopped when those carbon fiber brakes are cold. Obviously, too much front bias for Robbie Gordon. 17-4 for Robbie Gordon. Why would they even use carbon fiber brakes? They're much more expensive. Reason being, much lighter on all four corners, less on front weight. The car handles much better over the, some of the severe bumps here at Michigan. So there's no confusion. There was some talk as Goodyear slows down. Goodyear slows it down. He's out of fuel. He's probably out, exactly. He went 44 laps. Remember that Gordon went 42 and came in. Goodyear has carried it to the 44th lap, and that appears to be too far. And the glory of leading at the Michigan 500 suddenly backfires as Scott Goodyear hopes he makes it down off the banking and all the way down the pit lane to his pit. I don't think he will. Gary Gerald. Well, the crew now is in some, not a state of panic, but a major state of concern. They think that it probably is the fuel situation. They're poised, they're waiting, they're looking, no good year in sight. Oh my, what terrible That's disappointment. Chris Griffith, his chief mechanic, looking down the pit lane. He may have to try and go down and help Goodyear, but he may roll just far enough to get to his pit lane, his pit box. 
That's going to put him well out of the action, Gary Gerald. It looks like it is fuel. Is the engine running? The engine was not running, I don't think, Paul, and all the noise, but the starter hasn't gone over the wall yet. They're changing the tires. They're getting the fuel. Here comes the starter to the wall. Yeah, no, there's no fire there at all. Now the starter will be engaged. Oh, my. Now it turns over once. Fueling still not yet complete. Fueling now complete. Engine turns over again. But when you run them out of fuel, sometimes it's tough to get them restarted. Now it roars into life, and Scott Goodyear, with all that frustration boiling inside of him, spins the wheels and gets away. All right, throughout of that, the race course stays green, despite the fact that Mauricio Guzman got against the wall on the exit of the pits. They did keep the pits open. Allen or Jr. picked up the lead of the race. Raul Boisel moved into second place with Emerson Fittipaldi third. Robbie Gordon made his stop, got him out into fourth, but look at him. He's now right on the back end of Emerson Fittipaldi, trying to take third away. And he battles so long and hard against Goodyear, and suddenly Goodyear hands him the position on the plate, but it has lit the fuse inside Robbie Gordon, and he is in a battle to possibly win this race. Emerson, oh, he goes outside Willie T. Ribs. Now he's on his favorite high line. Favorite high line chasing the Penske. Four versus Ilmore, here we go. Robbie Gordon tries to the inside. And look how easy he comes by, though. He gives the car a little twitch right on past Fittipaldi, and he sails into third place. Robbie Gordon is coming up through this field for the second time today. And that pass happened coming off turn two, right under Emerson's rear wing, got the slipstream, got the draft and the suction, and what a slingshot by by Robbie Gordon's Valvoline Cummins car. We're on board with a man on a mission right now. Being reported out of the race now, Paul Tracy. He's with Gary Gerald. Paul, this has been kind of a nightmarish day, and it started early when you banged into a wheel coming down here for that first pit stop and really never got much better, did it? Well, we started picking up some places, and we we're getting up into the points, but then we had a, a bad set of tires, and I had to pit again and lost a couple laps, and then ultimately we we lost a fuel pump or something, no fuel pressure, so it was just a long, a long day. You know, we shouldn't even have been out there. Now, is this the type of thing that might be of concern to your teammates, Unser and Fittipaldi? Well, I don't think so. I think it was our problem, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll look forward to the next race. This Today, we shouldn't even have been out there. Thank you, Paul. In the meantime, on the circuit itself, Al Unser Jr. is being pursued hotly by Raul Boisel in second place. He's just been whittling away on Al for the past couple of laps, but for the moment, this race is being led by Al Unser Jr. Two 500 backs to back? Uh, maybe. Next Saturday, August 6th, the American Bowl. The NFL preseason from Tokyo, Japan. Joe Montana leads the Kansas City Chief against Warren Moon and the Minnesota Vikings. NFL preseason on ESPN, Saturday, August 6th at 10 o'clock Eastern. At the Marlboro 500 at Michigan, Al Unser Jr., the leader of the race, Raul Boisel in second place. Third place is now Robbie Gordon as he got around Fittipaldi. Fittipaldi now in closing position. And the Penske, the more you run on full tanks, the better they get sometimes. Here he comes inside Gordon. That looked very easy. Fittipaldi back into third position. Unusually easy for Fittipaldi as Johansson is in trouble. Stefan Johansson's pit. They work on the spark plugs on the engine, but Johansson stays there, Gary Gerald. Yeah, he's in the cockpit. Kenny Anderson said he radioed to him that it coughed coming down the straightaway. He was in seventh position. Now he's in. They're going through the whole electronics drill, just troubleshooting, hoping that they can find a quick solution, Paul. Check those spark plug wires first and then go through the electrical system, change the black boxes. They've already done that. There's a routine drill for this. And Johansson was absolutely flying. He was almost 227 miles an hour, but he lost two laps when we saw that rear tire go down and then disintegrate earlier in the race. So Johansson, unfortunately, has been an uphill battle, but he has had the speed in Tony Bettenhouse's Alex Max car all this weekend. The fastest Penske car coming into this race. There is Mark Smith. Little bit of history here. The first time that a Smith has ever driven in a 500-mile race as Robbie Gordon's in trouble in the pits. 
Robbie Gordon gets in trouble on the pit road. Did that start on the racetrack and he just came down to this point? He was We're chasing. yellow again. He lost it in turn four, chasing Emerson Fittipaldi as team owner Derek Walker can't believe as he looks down to see what happened to Robbie Gordon. IndyCar observers say that the engine let go. That caused the spin. Started in the fourth turn, and he slid all the way into the pits, Jan Vikas. Well, the quick report that we have is that he lost the left rear link in the rear suspension. He was not trying to pit. They were not set up for him. Some sort of suspension problem for Gordon. Oh, well, wait a minute. That's an entirely different report than the observer's report of the engine. As Al Unser Jr. is the leader of the race, takes advantage of the yellow. Only 18 laps from his last stop, but on the 183rd, Raul Boisel locks up the brakes coming in as well, taking advantage of the yellow, as did Emerson Fittipaldi. But if it's suspension, are we back to the same question we asked at the start of the, of the program? And that is, is there an inherent engineering problem there that could bite other cars? Well, these cars, as we mentioned at the top of the show, take an incredible amount of punishment, and Jan Vikas has more. John? Guys, okay, it turns out there was so much going on here that there was two stories. It does appear as though the observers were correct that it was an engine. We'll have to find out why they were talking about suspension here in the Walker pit. We'll check that and let you know later. I'll tell you what, if, if I'm gonna take my, take my choice, I'd much rather it be the engine than suspension. Emerson Fittipaldi making his stop. We're under yellow, the sixth yellow of the day. 44 laps of this race have been run under yellow. Let's take a look at Robbie Gordon's onboard camera. Might give us an idea as, uh, as Fittipaldi just wanting to beat the pace car out. Past the blend line. So watching the speed limit in the pits, he may not have beat the pace car to no. the blend line. Otherwise, he would have been on his way long ago. So now, he will have to... So Fittipaldi with a problem. You know, he's unsure. He is unsure. He stopped, looked over to the pace car, who waved him by. But waved him by to go around and catch up, or... You know, exactly what was he being told there? He will be waved to go ahead and catch up to the back of the field. And stay on that lap. If, if Emerson had not stopped and got that indication from the pace car driver, he could have been black flagged and got a stop and go. So a wise move by our elder statesman. The view from the now quiet Robbie Gordon car back in the garage area as they begin to disassemble and uh, do a bit of an autopsy there to find out what the problems were that took Robbie Gordon off of a truly magnificent run. Let's go to Gary Gerald. Well, Rick Rice, our cameraman, showing you a trail of fluid that comes in behind the Valvoline Cummins number nine. And uh, Robbie Gordon, you stand here. It was an engine problem, but boy, what a day. What a show you have put on. It started with the tire problem early, but the maturity that you seem to have displayed in recent races, working your way back up, did you think you still had a chance to win this thing? I think we definitely had a shot at winning it. Um, I knew something was going on with the engine because I was pulling Emerson there pretty good when I was in third, and all of a sudden he started closing the gap. About three laps later, she exploded in um, turn three and four. Got very lucky. I mean, it slid all the way down pit lane and um, luckily didn't hit anything. But, you know, I got to give credit to these Valvoline guys. You know, they had an excellent pit stop, put me back on the lead lap, and um, we were just having a great run. We're looking at a replay right now, and what a masterful job to keep it off the concrete. Did you surprise yourself that you kept it off the wall? Uh, you know, I was hoping we didn't take it onto the wall. You know, um, we got a test coming up next week, and we're trying to win IndyCar races right now. We can't afford any crashes. So, unfortunately, we would have jumped up in points a little bit, but we didn't. Um, you know, I've got to give thanks to all of our crew for just excellent pit stops all day long and Valvoline Cummins. Two saves today, one off the wall with the tire a bit earlier as well. Uh, you know the old saying, much rather be lucky than good. And you've got a new three-year extension. On